Okay. We will discuss the scoreboard through an example. In the last lecture, we have given the introduction regarding the scoreboard. Now, we will see how it works through the example. Okay. So, first, first you have to uh, remember that at issue, which hazards or which, what the condition you check on a structural hazard and there is a WW dependency. In read up red, you will check RAW dependency and in write back WR dependency and the follow execute there is no hazards. Okay. And another thing here, how many functional limits and the, what are the functional limits and how many clock cycle for each functional limit. So we have functional units like integer, add, multiply, division. So integer takes one clock cycle for execution. Okay. Now add takes two clock cycle, multiply takes ten clock cycle, division takes forty clock cycle. Now integer number of units functional units for the integer only one integer unit. Number of add is one. Number of multiply unit is two. Number of division unit is one. Okay. Now we will see one example. So this is first remember this thing. Okay. Condition and what is the functional unit and how many block cycles are taking and what number of units for each functional unit. Now so this is the example. So these are the instructions load, there is two load instruction and multiply and subtract and division then add. Now first the instruction status table. So I already told that in last lecture there is four stages. Issue, read up the execute, write back. Okay. So each and each and every instruction will pass through these stages. Now, other the functional unit status table. In this, you will write for the functional units. What are the units? Integer, multiply one, multiply. Because there is two multiply functional unit. So multiply one and multiply two. And R and division functional unit. And for each functional unit, there is time field. So BG. Whether the functional unit is BG or not. So all are no. So initially all are no. So which operation will do? So basically integer can do load and stop and add also can do the add or subtract. So that's why which operation it will do. FI, FJ, FK. So FI is the destination register, FJ is the source register, FK is the another source register, QJ, QK, it will tell about the functional unit, which functional unit will provide FJ and FK if it is not available. RJ and RK are the like it will tell about whether FJ or FK are available or not. Okay. So remember FJ corresponding QJ corresponding RJ. Okay. Subscript J, J, J. Same K, K, K. So this thing has to have to remember. Then register file status table. In the register file status table, so here what are the registers we have used in the instruction that will write in the row. And which function you will write on that register, here you will write. Okay, so initially there is no nothing, so initially it is empty. So now I will go for the cycles. Okay, so at the first clock cycle, what will happen? The first instruction will enter into the what? Scoreboard. And which says issue stage? At the first clock cycle, it enters the issue stage. So when it enters into the issue stage, that means Load will take which functional unit? It will use integer functional unit in it. So integer functional unit is now BG. Is now what? BG. Okay. Now, what the operation is called for me? Load. Now, what is the source destination register? F6. What is the source register? R2. Okay. Now, what is QJ and QK and RJ RK? Now, check whether R2 is available or not. Yes, R2 is available because there is, there is no upper instruction, in a, there is no above instruction. Because it is the first instruction, there is no dependency. So, R2 you will get initial value. So, you can say, yes, it is available. See, R2 is available, you will write yes. So, as it is yes, so it will be black. These are will be blank. Okay. Now comes to second. At second class second, it enters into the read operand. It enters into the read operand. So, because in read operand, what we are taking the row? Because at is the first instruction, there will be no row. There is no above instructions. Now, can we do here? 
can the second instruction enter into the issue or not okay so before what is the condition for that you check whether there is any structure hazard or ww hazard okay so just tell me whether there is structure hazard or ww hazard or not so see first instruction is the switch functionality integer so second also if you will issue it then it will also need the integer but we have only one integer functionality so which is already bg which is already bg it be yes okay that means here it occurs what structural hazard so what because of the structural hazard you can remember like this because of the structural hazard you cannot issue what two clock cycle you cannot issue what two clock cycle got it then for the third clock cycle that means when the first instruction will complete then we can enter into the issue stage for the second instruction okay so as now to so, as it will as you know that dynamic scheduling is in order issue as this cannot be issue that means following will be cannot be issue next comes to the third clock cycle so at third clock cycle it will use the issue stage so how many clock cycle it will take it will take one clock cycle so that means at third clock cycle it will complete so same at third clock cycle it cannot enter into the issue stage because of structure hazard then fourth clock cycle it will be right back so when it is right back after the completion of this stage okay okay at, at during the fourth clock cycle it is doing the right back but after the fourth clock cycle what will happen it will be no this will be cross out okay that means now integer functional limit is free now integer functional limit is free so when what happened at the fourth fifth, fifth clock cycle so fifth clock cycle second instruction that is load can enter into the issue stage because integer functional limit is now free so when it is free now we can issue it so when we issue it that means functional limit will be updated so now from no to yes it is doing load operation what is the best oh sorry i forgot one thing so x6 will be written by the integer in the first clock cycle for the first clock cycle it will be updated it is also here x6 will be written by the this so up to 1 to 1 to 4 this will be activated okay 1 to 4 x6 will be written by the integer okay what, what happened in the fifth clock cycle in fifth clock cycle it will be strike out because we have already written now in fifth clock cycle f2 will be written by the what integer so now integer function again will provide this so at which clock cycle from the fifth okay now so now I'll just change it here f2 the destination is f2 now r3 is it available or not because r3 is not no one is writing on r3 so r3 is yes okay got it now in next clock cycle at sixth clock cycle can it enter in three or not not Yes, it can enter because there is no row. It is no one is writing R three, so you can check from here also. R three is available. Yes, so it can enter into the read operand at six clock cycle. Okay. Now, question is, can we do the issue here? Which one? Multiply instruction. Can we do the issue here? So for the issue, structure has it. So if it needs multiply functional limit, so there is two functional limit R three. Now, second condition is W W has it. so it is writing on f0 any before instruction any above instruction those are in one writing f0 already present in the scoreboard so if first instruction is already completed only second instruction is present in the scoreboard so which is writing on the f2 so there is no w a w hazard got it there is no w a w hazard so there is no structure hazard no w a w hazard that means we can issue at Fifth clock cycle, sixth clock cycle. So when we issue the sixth clock cycle, remember when we bring the issue, all automatically you will update this functional limit status table and register file status table. So multiply one will say now yes B G. So F zero or do we multiply F zero, F two and F four. 
Now, whether F2 and F3 are available or not? F2 is not available. F2 is not available because F2 is not written into the F2. Okay. The second instruction is writing on the F2. So, that means we will go for the third. Here, F2 is no. Just see. Why F2 is no? Because F2 is not yet write back. Okay. F2 is not available yet. Now for the F4, no one is writing F4. That means it is available. So corresponding that F4, it is yes. Now, when you are writing no, which functional unit will provide that F2? Which functional unit? So F2 will written by the integer. So just write in the QJ integer functional unit will provide that but F2 got it? Yes or no? F2 will provide by the load, load means that integer. So is there any doubt in this? Yes, we will multiply F0, F2, F4 source destination, source source then you check F2 is available or not? No. So if it is no then which functional unit will provide that? Okay. If it is F4 is available, so corresponding QK will be blank. Okay. Now just operation will be occurred here. So F0 will write which functional unit multiply 1. Got it? Next. Just like this, we will do a updating. So quickly we will do it. Now, Ocha, can you tell me why you uh, don't think that we can issue this software? At one clock cycle, only one instruction can be issued. Okay, don't think that software also issue at six clock cycle. No. If software will be issued, then it will go for the seventh clock cycle. Okay. So that means in one clock cycle, only one instruction will be issued into the scoreboard. Okay. So don't confusion on that. And what about this four and five? Because because of the structural hazard. Go both are the load instruction. Integer either using integer functional unit. So because of that, so when it is completed, it completed then it can start here because of the structural hazard. Okay. But here there is no structural hazard, no W hazard, so we can kiss it. Okay, so this this how to you have to keep in mind when you will draw these things. Now after the second cross cycle. So seventh cross cycle. So here you can say for the second instruction, all are available. So it will go for the education stage. Okay, so how many clock cycles will it? One clock cycle. Now, can we read up and here? Can we read up and here? No. Why? What is the condition? Condition for the read up and here? W. So R A W means L2 is not yet written back. You can find out from this table or you can find out from this instruction also. L2 is not yet completed. Okay, so when it will be completed, you will this will affect after this clock cycle, you can start here. Okay, so you cannot do here at seventh clock cycle. Now, can you issue? We cannot do real operand for the multiply. Can you issue it for the subtract? Let's check it. What is the condition? Structural hazard, W dependency. So it is it will be used which hardware? Add. So R is now free. R hardware is R functionality is free. Now it will write in F8. So if well, uh, part of the instruction already in the scoreboard, if a load and multiply, which is writing on F2 and F0. No one is writing on F8. So there is no structural hazard and no WW dependence. So that means we can issue it at seventh clock cycle. Got it? There is no structural hazard because it will use integer. Uh, it will use add hardware functional unit and there is no WAW hazard because it will write on F8 and these two already present in the scoreboard which is writing on F2 and F0. Okay? So there is no WAW dependency also. So when you are issuing what I said, just update here. Yes. And it is uh, uh, going subtract. Then F8, F6, F2. Now check it whether F6 is available or not. F6 is provided with the first load. It is already completed. So yes. Corresponding that F6 is yes. RJ. Up to F2. F2 is not yet completed. So no. 
So when it is no, then who will provide that? It will provide by the integer. Okay. So RK is no. So corresponding to RK, which function will provide? That is your integer. Okay. Now, um, which this next one is to write it F8. So corresponding to F8, what you will write? Your R. Okay. So this is what at the seventh block cycle. If the question will come, what is the status of each table at the seventh block cycle? You will just write, draw this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Okay. Got it? So this is status at the seventh block After the seventh block cycle. Now, what is happening at the next block cycle? See. That is your eight. At the eighth block cycle, it will enter into the right back. Okay, it will enter into the right back stage because the execution only take one block cycle, seven in seven it will be complete. So in on eight it will go to the right back. Now so can we read up at the eight block cycle? No. After eight, that means at nine you can read. On eight you cannot. On eight it is writing to the register. Okay, so we cannot read uh, read that one. Now same here for the same here we cannot do it at the eight block cycle. Now come to the division instruction. Okay, whether can we issue it at eight block cycle or not? Just check it. So there is no structural hazard. It needs division functional event which is free. Division functional event is free. Bj is no. Now it is writing on F10. It is writing on F10. So obviously. No one is writing on F2. Which one? It is writing F2, F0, F8. These are now in the scoreboard. So no one is writing on the F2. So we can issue at 8th block cycle. Okay. Now, at 9th block cycle, what will happen? See. At 9th block cycle, huh. so after the 8th block cycle, so after the 8th block cycle, another operation will occur. What I say? When this instruction enters into the scoreboard at the issue stage. So this will be what? Yes. Doing division. Next F10, F0, F6. Now check whether F0 and F6 are available or not. F0. F0 will provide by the multiplier, not at the level yet. This is not completed like that. Okay. So for the F0 it will be no. Corresponding F0 it will be no. Now come to F6. F6 will be already present because at 4th block cycle we have given. So, yes. So, if it is not providing, so which functional will provide that? Multiply. Huh. Multiply 1. Or mult 1, you can write mult 1. Okay. And this one is the blank. So, what I said? But immediately uh, update this part at F10. Division functional unit will write on this. So this is happened at the eighth clock cycle. At the eighth clock cycle. So what happens after eighth clock cycle? So one thing on eighth clock cycle, this is the scenario. After eight clock cycle, see after eight clock cycle means this is already written into the F2. This is already written in the F2. On eight, it, it is it was written now. So after it means it is already written. So that means, see, those who are depending on the F2, that corresponding that it is will be become yes. See, for the multiplied work, it will be become yes. For the uh, subtract, it will be become yes. Okay, see, corresponding F2, it will be become yes. After 8 block cycle. This, this is occurred at what? After I am just writing. Otherwise, you will go to it and do it. After 8 block cycle, it will be operation will be occurred after 8 block cycle. If the question will occur after the 8th block cycle, what is the status of each table? You just see. Don't forget that you just you will have to complete it more to this. If you put it no, then you will get the get the mark. Okay. So just remember, after the eight block cycle, you are already getting back to the F2. So those are depending on the eight block, so that corresponding will be yes. Okay. Now come to the ninth block cycle. So as F2 is available, so at ninth block cycle, 
both are waiting for the F2. Yes or no? Both are waiting for the read of the end of F2 because all the registers are available but only F2 are not present. So at 9 clock second they can read. Okay. Now, so can we do here? Read. For which instruction? Division. No. Why? Because read button we are checking for the log because F0. F0 that means because of this we cannot do. When it will be complete, then we can start here. Okay, so at 9 clock cycle, we cannot read after for the division instruction. Now come to this one. Can we issue here? Tell me, can we issue here at 9 clock cycle? R instruction. So R instruction for the condition is hard. Structural and WW. So see, R instruction will take which hardware? Which function you need? And so R already is VG. Doing what? The subtract instruction. Because of the subtract instruction, we cannot do the R. Because already that function unit is VG is doing the subtract instruction. So that's why at 9th clock cycle we can do it. Then when we can do it? When this will be complete. When this will be complete, then we can do the issue. Okay. So for your reference, I'm just marking it. Okay. Don't draw like this. You just keep in mind when you have to, when you will start the issue, when you start the read of it. Now, next, at the 9 plus 9 plus cycle is this one. So, you have not issued, so nothing will be operation will occur. Now, talk to the 10 plus cycle. At 10 plus cycle, it will go to the education stage. It will go to the education stage. Both will go to the education stage. Now, so for the multiply, it takes how many clock cycle? 10. So from 10 to 19, it will do what? Education. So remember, on 10 we are doing the execution, on 11 we are doing the execution. So if you count it, it will go to 19. Don't write, don't write 10 to 20. Okay? Not 10 to 20. It will be 10 to 19. Same way for the subtract, it will take 2 clock cycle. So 10 and 11. 10 and 11. It will take 2 clock cycle. Okay. Now, at 11, it will be complete the education stage. Okay. Because it cannot be issued because it will be complete. It cannot be read up because of the right type of the multiply instruction. Now, that's complete. So, in 11, 12, it will be right back. Okay. So, on 12, it will be right back. So, when it is right back, after 12, what will happen? After 12, uh, after 12, this will be close up. See, when you are completing one instruction, just strike out this thing. Because this is occurred at 8 clock cycle completion. So, if you are to strike out, just remember to strike out. This one is also strike out 5 to, this is not to 5 to 8. Okay. Now, so now, subtract instruction is completed. So, now strike out to no. Strike out, strike out. Okay. Now, at 13th clock cycle, what will happen? What I said? Now your R server is free, R functional unit is free. Now it can start issue the last instruction. Okay, that is your addition. You just update it. So from no to yes, it is doing R. So what is the destination? F6, F8, F2. Then uh, huh, whether F8 and F4 are available or not? F8 is already available. What about F2? F3 is also available. See, F8 is dependency, but F8 is completed. So both are available. F2 provided by the load, this is also completed. That means corresponding to that, you write yes and yes. So as it is yes, yes, so there will be blank. Okay, got it. That means both are the available. Now, after the 14th clock cycle, so it is still in the execution step. It is after it will go, it will go to the 19th step, 19th clock cycle. So, so here we cannot start the read operand with the dependency. So, on 14th, we can do the read operand for the last instruction. Why? Because both operands are available. F8 and F2 are available. Okay, so there is no uh, but raw. There is no, but already it is covered in the scoreboard. Now, it will take how many clock cycle? 2 clock cycle for the education, 15 to 
Understand. 